Hey guys, welcome back to the main event. I'm Daniel, and uh, yeah, tonight we're still in the NWA. I think at this point it's just WCW, but fuck it, NWA. I think, I think NWA is still officially like involved at this point, so we'll, we'll still call it NWA. Anyways, NWA, and uh, yeah, tonight we're doing the Great American Bash 1990, the new revolution. And you know what? That's pretty accurate, actually, because this is kind of the uh, beginning of the uh, Sting era, if you will. So, uh, yeah, let's do this. We're going back to uh, July 7th, 1990. We're at the uh, Baltimore, oh, sorry, Baltimore Arena in Baltimore, uh, Maryland. And I believe we're in front of, like, 14,000 fans. The main event, we got the ring is surrounded by the dudes with attitudes. Uh, and Ole Anderson is handcuffed to Eligante. World title on the line. Sting versus Ric Flair. Uh, so yes, this is the match we've been waiting for since, I guess, February of 1990 when Sting was first injured. Uh, so here it is. It's, it's finally here. The dudes of attitudes. What the fuck is that? Like, to me, when, when I've heard of the stable. I didn't know who was in it. I just knew, like, you know, it was, like, the group that hung out with Sting. And so, it made sense, like, Sting and the Steiner Brothers, because, you know, when you hear dudes with attitude, it's like a bunch of young guys, hip, cool, you know, it's, it's the 90s, baby. I'm sorry, I did not picture uh, Junkyard Dog or Paul Orndorff in that group at all. Like, seriously, if that was on the test, if that was a multiple choice and you gave me those two, I mean, you could have, like, wasn't the air to, like, the Dynamic Dudes also attack team? Like, you could have gave me a list of all these people who were in the Dudes of Attitudes. Like, who who was not there? I would have booted out Junkyard Dog and uh, Orndorff right off the bat. I would have been wrong. I could not believe, like, they're like, Dudes of Attitudes, like, what the fuck, really? Dude, like, fucking... Uh, JYD has a huge bald spot to start back there. I will say, he looks in better shape here than he did when he was in WWF. I will say that. So, I mean, very nice that was working for him. And of course, like, you know, Ordinor always looked like he was in great shape, so his hair looked kind of like, you know, like a bob cut. I don't know, it was weird. But anyways, so dudes bad too. They're going to keep the horsemen out. They're allowed to be at ringside. And, uh, yeah, we got Ellie Conte handcuffed to uh, Ole Anderson, so... Uh, we can, it's the first time, I, I will say, I love the video package that opened this pay-per-view up, though. Uh, because it's like, it's like all the wrestlers, but they were, like, dressed as, like, the forefathers, you know, like, old revolutionary days, you know. I, I, I love, I like that, I really did. Um, and I also love, uh, the one thing I always liked about, uh, watching, like, clips or whatever, when I saw pictures or footage of old WCW, is I love the ramp. And, and it's the first pay-per-view we've had this so far. But the ramp that literally comes out to the ring. And it's like even with the ring apron, like it's elevated. I love that because I just remember seeing footage like Sting running down that fucker and then like diving into the ring. When you bring that back, the one thing WCW got right at this point was that ramp. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get started. Uh, so right off the bat, we got uh, Ollie Anderson like throwing a fit, has to be handcuffed. I'm like, bro, you had to know that like, this could not have just been a stipulation that was added tonight. Like you know, for a while you're gonna be handcuffed of Eligante. Like, I'm like, if you're not adamant about not being handcuffed, why you show up at the ringside at all? Like, seriously. Like, if, if, let's just go real for a second. Let's just, let's kayfabe this bitch. They're like, Daniel, you're going to be, you know, I, I plan on cheating. I plan on cheating to help out Flair. And they're like, well, Daniel, we know you're going to cheat. We're going to hand to cuff you this guy. I'm like, I ain't done it. Fuck you, I ain't done it. Well, you're going to have to. Well, I just won't be out there. And that's what I would do. I'm a bad guy. I'm not gonna go out there. But instead, all these other like, I'm not doing it, and he bumps in. He's like, Oh no! And they handcuff him. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a, it's a group called Dudes of Attitudes, also. So it's just how much more ridiculous can get. So, anyways, we get Sting and Flair out there, and I will I will say like the build up for this match, as far as like the commentary goes, I don't I didn't watch any of the I don't know the shows leading into this, but like Sting, like you know, saying like. You know, if, if I lose, if I lose this match, I will have no excuse. He's like, you know, the dudes are out there to protect the horsemen. Elegante is handcuffed to Ole. Like, at this point, there is no reason why I shouldn't win. And he, he was that confident. I like that. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. I, I do like that part. Uh, for everybody, because, you know, he did, it was his knee that was fucked up going into, or, you know, prior, you know, as the injury. So everybody was like, uh-oh, that's going to be the, the main targeting point right there from Flair. The match itself was okay. Um... 
And which is really disappointing to me because I mean I just assumed these guys would put on like a helmet. Like I thought they're and the thing, I thought they were like they face off a Starcade. I thought that match was just okay too. Like to me that match only picked up the last like two minutes. Um to me just this was just very standard, uh, which I was hoping for something a little more technical and maybe it's a little more fast paced or whatever. Uh, because I was just trying to get the bad taste of that fucking cage match from Luger and Flair out of my fucking mouth, but whatever. So, uh, but like I said, the match itself was okay. Uh, to me, it picks up when the horsemen try to interfere. Uh, and at that point, Ole gets up, and you, I, I'm pretty sure, and I just could not be bothered to hit the little back button, the rewind, but I'm sure that handcuff gets broken, like the chain gets broken, so he just like sits back down like, oh, I'm stuck here. Can't, can't move, even though that, that chain's clearly broken right now. Uh, so, yeah, Orphan go out there, do his attitude, you know, fight him off. Really cool moment there uh, is when that shit kind of settles down. Flair goes for a roll-up, and he has his feet, like, on the rope. The referee doesn't see it, goes for the count, and Rick Steiner runs and just, like, knocks his feet off the rope. Loved it. Like, I was like, holy shit. Uh, kind of a cool moment right there. Of course, Flair get, you know, glares at him from outside. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, that, that, was, that was kind of a cool moment. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, uh, overall this match was just very, uh, and I mean, maybe, you know, once again, I wasn't as emotionally invested, because I don't know, like, I, to me, I only know one sting, and that's the crow sting, and that's the one I like. Uh, I'm not impressed with this surfer sting, I just don't give a shit. Like, I've yet to see him in a match yet that I like. Um, you know, the, the first time I seen him in a main event was Howling Havoc, and that match was gay. Sorry, it was lame. I know we can't say gay anymore. It was lame. Um... Didn't care for that match at all. I uh, just thought it was just really ridiculous. Um, and then, yeah, that Starcade main event, I just wasn't feeling it. And then here we are now, and I'm just kind of like, like I'm sorry. I just, I'm, and then once again, I, mean, I want to like it. And, I, and he was one, of, he, was, he was one of those guys that I actually had the action figure. Like I bought a lot of WWE wrestlers when I was a kid, because I mean it's like it's '99 one when I was buying the shit. So like you know. It was popular. I was a kid. I was like six, so it's okay to play toys. Uh, but no, I had the extra figure, and he was like one of those I liked, just because of face paint. Like that's only that attracted me. I was like, yeah, dude, dude, his face paint is awesome. Like I had no idea, like in, you know, he was actually a partner of Warrior at one point. But whenever I played, he would always team up with the Ultimate Warrior because like, they were just both jacked up, face painted dudes. So uh, wanted to like him. Now I'm watching him. It's like, wow, I just, I'm not feeling it at all. He just, he's too mild-mannered. And then he tries to get crazy, like his Halloween Havoc promo. You know, this match is a little weird. <laughs> I like weird. Dude, fuck off, dude. You're, you're annoying. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm not feeling this. I, I'm just not feeling Sting. I'm not feeling, I, don't, I wasn't feeling this match completely. It's not a bad match. It's really not, but just, it was nothing special about this. Um... But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, toward the end of the match, Flair goes for the figure four and Sting counters with a small package. This is like the second time Flair has lost to this, like, within the past couple of matches, few matches. Uh, but, you know, whatever. One, two, three, Sting, the new world champion. Big celebration. Luger once again shafted. <laughs> Feel sorry for Luger, man. Like, I really do. Like, Luger gets so much shit online. And... He, he just he's always second fiddle like seriously no matter and I know he he, he finally does capture the title a couple times here and there but uh I don't know maybe when we get to that point I'll be like finally he get he gets it I don't know I just know that here it was just kind of like uh Luger Luger should have won just saying Luger should have won uh but anyways but Sting wins it big big time party everybody's happy I do love the the promo Sting cuts afterwards. Uh, you know, he does this whole, I mean, it's, it's about as baby face as you can get, but it, it was good. He was just like, you know, Flair, Flair was the best champion. He was. So I got big shoes to fill, but you know what? I'm here to do it. Let's do it. I like that. I thought that was really cool. So, uh, yeah, that was it. Um, so my, like I said, my overall thoughts, like I said, overall, it's not a bad match, but just, it's not really a match I would care to watch in. To me, the only highlight was there was a, there was a part where they're fighting on the ramp, and, of course, flares against the ropes, and Sting runs down the ramp and clotheslines him into the ring. That was it. Like, that was really it. Uh, other than that, the dudes with attitudes didn't really add anything, except for a Rick Steiner knocking his feet off the rope. But other than that, I didn't really give a shit. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it, it was what it was. And it just seemed, I mean, I, now, I mean, it's hard to say this now, because obviously, like, I knew Sting was winning, because, Christ's sake, 
we all know Sting wins the title here. But I just couldn't imagine this being much of a shock even then. Like, he just knew, like, well, Sting's winning. So, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Everything about this match is just kind of like, ah, uh, to me. But, okay, I'm sorry. That's who I am. Uh, so, yeah, there it is. Let me know what you guys thought about this match, though. I'm sure I'll get some hate mail for this one. But, uh, sorry, just not feeling it. Uh, but, yeah, drop your comments down below. And, guys, tune in tomorrow night because we're going back to where things are normal. WWF. Yeah. SummerSlam 1990. Whew, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. So, uh, yeah, tune in. We'll check it out then. So, all right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Until next time.